episode 335, I showed you how to deploy to a virtual private server, but this required we run a number of commands to set it all up. Now, if you have multiple servers, this is probably something you don't want to do manually every single time. So in episode 337, I showed you how to automate the server setup using Capistrano, which I think works quite well. However, this does stretch the boundaries of what Capistrano is designed to do. It's not really a server provisioning tool. And this brings us to Chef which has been one of the most frequently requested topics lately. Now, a quick disclaimer, I'm not an expert on Chef, but my goal here is to show you enough of the basics to where you can explore Chef on your own if it seems to fit your needs, because it is a rather complex tool with a steep learning curve. Now, what Chef will do is help automate the setup and management of your servers. And one of the first decisions you'll need to make is whether you want to go with Chef Server or Chef Solo. Now, Chef Server is where Chef is running on its own server, and other servers can communicate with it to determine how they should be set up. But Chef Solo, on the other hand, is where Chef runs on the same server that it is setting up. Now, since I'm working with a single VPS here, I'll be using Chef Solo, and it's just a nice way to grasp the basics and experiment with various recipes. All right, let's dive right in and set up a new VPS to experiment with Chef Solo. I'll be using Linode here, but any VPS will do. And I'll just choose to rebuild this Linode and give it a root password and say rebuild. And then I will uh, choose to boot this up afterwards as well. And so after that's done, I can SSH into it as the uh, root user. And let's uh, remember the host and type in the uh, password. Now Chef uses Ruby and currently Ruby is not installed on the system. So we'll need to first install it to use Chef. Now my preference on installing Ruby for Chef is to compile it from source using these commands. And then notice afterwards I'm installing a couple of gems to get Chef working on our system. Now if you prefer to install Ruby through RVM or RubyEnv, you can always do that through Chef afterwards through a recipe, but here we're just installing an initial version of Ruby to get Chef running. Now I'm just going to copy this script URL here so that we can run it on the server. And so we can do so by calling curl, pass in the URL, and then pass it to bash, and that way it will install Ruby from source. Now that script will take a little while to run, but once it's done, we should have Ruby installed and Chef Solo. And that's working, so now we just need to set up Chef. And the way Chef Solo works is that it expects all of its configuration files and cookbooks to exist on the same system that we're running it on. So I'm going to set up a directory here called uh, var chef, where I can place all the chef files and all go into that directory. Now inside of here, I'm going to make a chef cookbook under a cookbooks directory. Now normally in chef, you'll make a separate cookbook for each thing you want to install and set up, such as Nginx or MySQL or Git and so on. Now when working with Chef Solo on a single VPS, I find it easiest to make a cookbook called main, which sets up everything I need for the server. Now each cookbook has many recipes under a recipes directory, so I'll make that. Now Chef will look inside of cookbooks for a recipe called default.rb, and this will be the primary recipe, and usually other recipes are variations of this. So I'll make that default.rb recipe here. Now inside of a recipe, I have access to methods to help set up our system. For example, if I wanted to install git on here, I could run package a git core, and that will use the package manager for this system. In this case, Ubuntu is going to use apt git, and it'll basically run apt git install git core on our system here. So I'll save this for now as our recipe. Now we also need to set up a configuration file for Chef Solo telling it where our cookbooks are located. So I'm going to do that under a file called solo.rb. And in here we need to call cookbook path and pass in the path to our system. I'm going to use expand path here and use relative path to this file and go under the cookbooks directory we set up. And so I'll just pass in that file path into here like this and save it. So now we can run the chef solo command and set our config file to that solo.rb file we just made. Now, even though Chef ran successfully here, it didn't really do anything. And that's because the run list up here, you can see that it is currently empty. So even though we created a recipe, we still need to tell Chef to run that recipe. So we could create as many cookbooks as we want inside of here, but Chef will only run what we tell it to. So we need to make a run list configuration here. And with Chef Solo, that's normally done in the JSON format through a file called node.json. Now don't confuse this with Node.js. This is completely unrelated. 
Node is just a term that Chef uses to represent a server that it needs to set up. Now inside this JSON file, we need to specify a uh, run list option and tell it to run the uh, recipe called main like this. And then that's it. We'll save it. So now we can run that chef solo command again, but this time pass in a dash J option telling it to use that node JSON file we set up. So now this time it's installing the git core package you see here. And it finished running that main recipe successfully. Now, if you don't want to specify that dash J option every time when you run the chef solo command, we can actually configure that inside of the solo.rb file. We can do this through a call to a JSON at tribs and then just pass it the path to that JSON file, which is node.json, like that. And now we can call chef solo without passing that dash J option. Now notice when we ran this command again, the output is a little bit different. It still says it ran the install action for git core, but it doesn't say that it installed it like it does up here. And the idea here is that you can run the chef command as many times as you want, and it will only install and perform the actions as necessary on the system and not everything over again. So this means you could run chef quite frequently, such as every time you deploy your Rails application. Now there's a lot more I want to do with this recipe, but editing it on the server is kind of a pain, so let's move it over to my local. So I'll just use SCP to copy this over from my uh, VPS, and that's under var chef, and I'll put it in the current directory here. And then I'll open that up in TextMate. So here's my chef directory structure and my default recipe where I'm currently just installing git. But what are some other things that I could do here? Well, if you check out the resources section of the chef documentation, you can find a list of many methods which you can call inside of your recipe. For example, you could make a new directory or a file, and there's our package method we used, and you can even create a new user, and there's a lot of documentation for each of these methods on various ways to use them. So let's make a new user here. All we have to do is call user, pass it a name and a block, and then any other attribute parameters that we want to customize our user. Now this password attribute is quite interesting. This is not a plain text password, it's what's known as a shadow hash, and it gives you some tips on creating the shadow hash up here. I'll be using this command to make that shadow hash. And so I'll just paste in that command here, and you can change the password to whatever you want, but I'll just leave it at that. And this gives me a hash which then I can use in my recipe. So now let's create a user called deployer. So we just call user, pass the name deployer, and a block. And then I could set the uh, password attribute to that shadow hash that I created in the terminal, and I'll set the group to admin so that it has pseudo privileges, and I'll also set up the home directory to uh, slash home slash deployer. Now this home directory might not be created by default, and I found it necessary to pass in this option called supports, and say manage home and set that to true. So that way it creates that home directory. Now to run this recipe, I'm going to have to copy these changes over to my server. And I'm going to use rsync for that and just sync the current directory to my uh, VPS at the var chef directory. And type in my password. And then I'll run it by SSHing into my VPS and telling it to run that chef solo command with the config file at var chef solo dot rb. And I'll need to type in my password again. And looks like it ran successfully and created that deployer user. It works. Now I'd rather not have to type in my password every time I run these commands, so here's a little tip. There's a useful utility called SSH copy ID, which can help out with this. Although it's not included in OS 10, if you have Homebrew, you can easily install it through that. And then you can run SSH copy ID and pass in your server's credentials. Then you'll have to type in the password one more time, and then next time you won't have to type it in. Really convenient little tool. All right, back to our recipe. Creating a user like this works fine, but I don't like having so many static strings inside of our recipe like this. For example, our password and our username are settings we might want to change depending on the server we're deploying to. So it would be, it would be nice to move these into some kind of external configuration. And Chef supports this by giving us access to the node JSON content. So what I could do here is add a new option, let's just call it user, and I can pass in other values in here such as a name, set that to deployer, and a, a password and set that to that shadow hash, just like that. 
And then I can have access to this back inside of our recipe through a node hash. I could just call a node user and then name to access that value. And then I can use this wherever I want inside of my recipe. And I could do the same thing for the password here. Just type node user password. Next, let's talk about templates. This allows you to generate a file dynamically using ERB. All you have to do is call template, then pass it the name to the file you want to write, and then pass in the name of the template, and it'll write it. For example, let's say I want to make a zshrc file inside of the user's home directory that we just created. Well, I can just call template and then pass it the path to the home directory dot zshrc, and then pass in a block. And I can tell it to use a source file called a zshrc.erb, which I'll make in a minute. I also need to set the owner to the user name, which is right here. So that way he'll be the owner of that zshrc file. So that template should exist under the main cookbook here in a directory called templates. And then inside of here, I need a directory called default. And here's where I can make the zshrc.erb file. So I'll just paste in some content into here for a very simple RC file that just changes the prompt, sets the Rails environment to production by default, and adds some color to the ls command. Now, the great thing about this is that we can make it dynamic using ERB, and we also have access to the node object like we did inside of the recipe. So we could say, only show this color option if the node user ls color option is present. So that way we can change this file depending on the content of the node JSON. So we can just add that ls color option into here and let's set that to true. Oh, and one more thing I forgot to change inside of the recipe is to set the user's shell to zsh. Now, even though we've already created a user, this will update the user shell information. So that's the great thing about Chef. Even if you already have something set up on the server, this will update the configuration to match whatever you specify in the recipe. And I'll also need to add the package for ZSH so that it installs it. Now let's try this out. I'll run the rsync command to sync the files over to the server, and then run that Chef solo command. So this ran successfully and gave us some pretty interesting things in the output. It told us it installed ZSH, and that it altered the deployer user, changing the shell, and added the zshrc file based on our template, and changed the owner to that deployer user. Now we could try sshing into that deployer user, and type in the uh, plain text password. And there we go, now we're logged into our deployer user, and the uh, zshrc file has a content that we specified in the template, it works. Now you'll probably want to install a lot more onto the server so that it can host a Rails application. For example, you probably want to install Nginx, which we could do with a simple package Nginx. But what if I want the more recent version and maybe even compile it from source? Well, there's a rich community around Chef with plenty of cookbooks that we can use on the net. A good place to start is the Opscode community site. And look at that, there's an Nginx cookbook right here available for us. So we could just download it here and then move it into the chef directory. So now under my cookbooks directory, I've added an Nginx cookbook, and this is more what a proper cookbook looks like, complete with a metadata.rb file containing a lot of useful information. One thing that's good to check here are calls to depends, because cookbooks will often depend on other cookbooks. In this case, it expects build essential, R unit, blue pill, and oh hi. Now, not all of these are going to be used depending on our configuration, but it's still a good idea to find these on the community site and download them as well. I'll do that quickly here. There we go, I have added those other cookbooks. Now, another thing this will tell us is what recipes are available. You can see there's a default Nginx recipe, which just uses the normal package install. And we also have an Nginx source recipe, which will install it from source. And that's what I want to do here. We could also see the source code for this recipe under the recipes directory, source.rb, and here it's just going to download Nginx source code and compile it. Now there are a lot of configuration options you can override inside of your node configuration. You can see it's setting node Nginx version here, which we can override in our node JSON file. But we can just leave it at as default too, which is defined inside of the attributes directory under default.rb, you can see the Nginx version is defaulting to 104.14. So exploring cookbooks like this is a great way to understand how Chef works and how you can structure your own cookbooks.
So let's uh, close this up for now and just focus on our own recipe and include Nginx instead of using the package here. Just call include a recipe and then pass an Nginx source because that's the recipe I want to use here to compile it from source. So let's try this out by running our rsync command again and then run chef solo again. Now this will have a lot more output because it's actually compiling Nginx from source here. There we go, looks like it installed successfully, but there's currently no site enabled here, so let's make one. So going back to my recipe, I'm going to paste in some code here to make a simple Nginx site. So what I'm doing first is making a new directory under the user's home called example, and inside of here I'm going to create a file called index.html, which has the content of hello world. And then I'm going to make another file under the nginx directory called sites available example which just has a very simple nginx server config just to get this working now just because the site is available it's not actually enabled with nginx yet and actually the nginx cookbook provides a nice method to help us do this if we look under definitions there's one called nginx site and this is a method that we can actually call inside of our recipe to enable an nginx site so let's do this under our recipe just call nginx site and then pass it the name. In this case, it's just called example, and that will enable it and reload nginx. Now I've already ran the rsync and chef solo commands off camera, so now let's just try visiting the IP address for this VPS and see if it works. And we get the content hello world because that's what we set up with nginx. It works. Well, that's as far as I'm going to take this recipe, but I hope it gives you some idea on how you might use Chef to set up a server for Rails deployment. Now, I've only scratched the surface of Chef in this episode, and there's a lot of documentation at the Chef Wiki, so be sure to check that out for more information. And don't forget about all the cookbooks that are available on the community site. And there are even a lot more cookbooks available out on GitHub. For example, 37signals has a giant cookbooks repository, which is great to check out. Now, if Chef isn't really your thing, there are plenty of alternatives you can check out, such as Puppet, Sprinkle, or Rubber, and I'll link to those in the show notes. And don't forget about the simple Capistrano recipe solution I showed last week if your deployment is really simple. And that wraps up this episode on the basics of Chef Solo. Thanks for watching.